Yeah. The sun has just risen today, 1st of May 2023. As the time passes, I do this video. My videos are rarely seen, only by some of my trainees. About four or five or maximum nine. Though there are about 300 plus subscribers. Anyway, the topic today is something very simple which I have faced some 25 years back when I started first creativity training at that time. Now I don't do it. Now I do training in creative analytic observation and reflection and thinking and conceptualization. It's a heavy time, of course. So the question was, when I introduced the concept of creativity, one of the audience would say, everybody is creative. So I'm talking about 1987-88 like that. At that time, that notion was there, at least in top places like Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, National Institute of Design kind of institutions. Because there were already literatures, articles and books by many people. Edward D. Bonner's books on creative thinking hats and all that were very well known. So uh, somewhere there in most of those books, uh, a creativity researcher would write, everybody is creative. That is his observation. His angle of observation. Okay. At least he is aware that everybody uh, can be creative. That's why they have published those methodologies. But I am. I revised it to the audience. I am uh, definitely not. Everybody is definitely not creative. Understand the normal distribution population. 50% are below average in intelligence. So, everybody just cannot be creative. Even the greatest creative individual was not known to be creative uh, even in his or her neighborhood till they came out with some discovery. He was doing it not because he was aware of creative or anything. But he had practiced creativity. So I revised the statement. Said by whoever great researcher or writer or philosopher in the world in the domain of creativity that everybody is not creative. It has to be changed that everybody has creativity as a potentiality, as an intellect of the a huge nervous system that human being is blessed with. So children are to be trained in their observation, in their attention, in their so-called thinking or their own conceptualization. They should be trained in imagination, in visualization. And to respond or express or behave or do or relate with other people and to develop a proper language, not to talk to others and give reactions. But unless you have a proper language, you cannot conceptualize your own observations and the perceptions and the insights. You need a language to carry them to yourself. That's why every creative person, whatever, whatsoever be the field, must be a great reader, no doubt about that. Whether it is Albert Einstein or Nikola Tesla or Rabindranath Tagore or, or, or Ramanujam or even the, even the greatest rishis. Okay, rishis may not have had books, but they read the books of the nature process around them. They had only nature process around them. They listen to the nature process. A nature process is everything. In some other video I have said that they, all, everything is nature process and nature process only. Everything works, whether, whether a jet engine or a AK-47 rifle or a gun or a, or, a, or a knife or any tool, 
everything works by nature process they were made out of materials from nature process they were shaped by nature process and they are used by the nature process available in the brain so that is nature process with that nature process the ancient mystics of india and the rishis of india interacted and they created all great perspectives and philosophies they created the great ayurveda by just talking to the plants and the trees and the seeds and the roots and the mists and the rains and the weathers and the seasons so children should be trained to interact and observe nature process to article to write articles and poetry about falling leaves and rising flowers and why a rose is a rose is a rose Every child should be uh, induced with the implications of that beautiful English action. A rose is a rose is a rose. A rose can only be a rose and all roses are roses. They come to their completeness. So you are also a rose. What is your completeness? Complete everything that you feel like doing, like developing, like learning. Okay. That's what I did. I am an absolutely original person. what our uh, uh, i have originated a lot of ideas that's a different story i understand it that's why i talk like this i don't think anybody else talk like this about creativity with correct uh, representations of the possible probable referent that is named creativity even that is my understanding So everybody has creativity. Every child is to be trained not in creativity. Nobody can train directly creativity. They have to behave with the ideas. Like nobody can get directly balanced on even a bicycle. They have to pedal and with the pedal and the second pedal and gradually only even a cycle allows you to be on balance on that. So in order to get balanced, they have to do a different thing. A lot of creative thinking techniques are based on existing thinking in the line of creativity. In order to develop creativity, you need to do something else. All things are there by something else. You see, if somebody is on just tea powder and milk and water and all those things, for the first time, they would not know how to make a tea. Okay. Or if somebody is shown a cup of tea, they could not know, they will not be able to know in my own interviews what were the contents in that. Because the contents or the scaffolding or the materials by which something is created will never look the same or similar and definitely identical to the thing made. So training in creative thinking, training in creative analytic thinking, training in enlightenment or training in whatever is to be done in unrelated aspects. The first singer, the first musician, the first theater director, the first one. Okay. One should have that kind of a properties and that is there with everyone by the fact that it was with some other human beings. And they only know that every human being is made the same way, anatomically, physiologically. And anatomy and physiology is the person. Anatomy and physiology is the mind. And anatomy and physiology is intellect. Anatomy and physiology is intelligence and spirit. So coming back, everybody has creativity. I talked about children. But the adults may have to try a little hard because they have already developed mental traps, mental blocks. I have written a book called The Nine Mental Traps. In that book, I unfortunately put a tagline, uh, The Nine Mental Traps of Corporate India. I should not have done that. 
I should have mentioned uh, some other title and uh, oriented the book in that way. Indian corporate uh, uh, personnel are not at all concerned about uh, creativity. They are all uh, scared people, they are all fearful people of a third world mindset. Fear and anxiety. Okay. So they want to somehow get into a job and somehow sustain it. That's all. Unless you are free with whatever you do, uh, I mean, that's all creativity and things like that. I can talk about that for days together, days together. So everybody has creativity. They have to first discover their mindsets that are blocking their creativity from expression. Everybody as of now understands at least a little bit that they have to have at least a new variation of an existent idea. It all begins with ideas. Even to make variations in an automobile engine or in a, in a silicon chip, the, the beginning, the intent, the beginning is in the idea. Okay, let me place it like this. Let me put it into, into this. Let me reprocess it like this. That idea occurred first. That perception occurred first. That intuition occurred first. That imagination occurred first. That visualization occurred first. And therefore the conceptualist says, okay, let us do it, let me try it this way. Sitting alone in the laboratory of experience or uh, doing. So, you know, it is very difficult for me to talk very short. Because I have original thinking, if I take one topic, uh, it goes flying, and if it is an available topic, which I am very familiar with, it will go uh, like an eagle. So, uh, if you want to be creative, if you want to realize that you have creativity, to what extent, uh, in which way you can break the shell of that cocoon of that uh, mindset, you read the book, The Nine Mental Traps. Available in Amazon.com only. Or at least uh, uh, ask uh, uh, some questions to yourself. Why? In which way? You are not creative. Ask yourself a genuine question. Are you really creative? Ask yourself one question. Is there one doing that you do? completely, correctly, firmly, with elegance and confidence that it is a good work. Any one job, then you are eligible to try that. I have discovered that most people are not at all wonderfully good in that, even in one activity. Very rare. So try that. If you are writing, you write beautifully. If you are talking, talk elegantly and logically. If you are cooking a cup of tea, do it with perfect, with uh, impeccability. Read some Zen literature on making a cup of tea. I'll just read that. Alright, wish you best, luck, best of luck to discover in which way you are creative with the complete trust that you have creativity in you. Every human being is made alike. You only know that God made human beings alike. You're God. You're God. Alright? You have to trust your God that it made a wonderful product. I mean, the you. If you trust God, that is your primary response. Ask yourself whether you really trust God. If you trust God, do you understand God? The doings of God. At least understand one doing of the God. That is the God who has created you. Your God. And the God will not do an incomplete job. Alright? Good luck.